So how do you create a clickable thumbnail for YouTube or for any other social media platform for that matter? As that is all that matters is to get the click. In this video, I'm gonna be walking and talking you through how I create my thumbnails using Canva. And I'm gonna start off with a blank canvas and actually end up with a finished product, a finished thumbnail that I would say it would have a high click through rate because at the end of the day, if your thumbnails aren't getting clicked on, then nobody is watching your videos. So I'm just gonna dive straight on into Canva and get started. So here we are inside of Canva and I've just selected a blank canvas here. Um, this is a new file. If I just go to resize it here, the width is 1280 and the height is 720 pixels. So that's what you're gonna need if you're creating thumbnails for YouTube. Uh, if you're creating them for any other types of platform, just have a look at what that platform recommends before actually building them out here. But I'm gonna start with this blank canvas. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to want to do is create some sort of background. Um, and I like to either use some free images uh, software, so either Pixels, Pixabay, or uh, Unsplash. So I'm just gonna go Unsplash. I'm gonna Google Unsplash. And it's a free, or you can get a free, you can get paid, but uh, a free tool to use uh, royalty-free images. So I'm gonna put, um, because I teach uh, online business and I teach uh, the tools and, and tricks for you to grow your online business, I'm gonna pretty much always be working from an office background. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put office background in here. And then all you need to do is select something that is contrasting, something that you could potentially sort of fade out. Um, so like this one here could be a nice background. This is a little bit too busy. Um, this is a bit too dark for my liking. So I think I've chosen one from here before and I think it's this one here. So I quite like this one. Um, I can put this into the background. I can blur it out. It's actually got quite a nice feel to it. Um, and all you need to do is download for free, download to your files and then upload it back into, into Canva. So I'm just gonna upload files uh, and then my downloads that's the file that I've just downloaded. So once it's uploaded to Canva, then you can click on it and then you can drag it into your Canva uh, and into your canvas. And then you wanna try and resize it. So you wanna try and resize it so it actually fits the whole thumbnail here. So I've gone full size there and I've gone up a bit here. So have a play around with this. There's no right or wrong answer. And then what you need to do here is you can edit this. So um, you can either edit the image, you can annotate it, you can have a bit of uh, transparency, blur. Um, so you can pretty much do what you want with this to edit this background how you see fit. So for backgrounds, I typically tend to blur them out a little bit. So if you click on the image itself and then click edit image and then all the adjustment buttons here, click see all and there's a blur one here. So if you click on that and take that blur to the right, you can see that actually blurs it out. It can go a little bit too far, but um, I'd usually come down and maybe say, um, keep it on 10 or 15 or something like that, however you see fit. So that actually blurs it out quite nicely for me. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. So next you're gonna wanna try and include some sort of title. Now, the aim of the title is to try and stop the scrolls, to try and distill your messaging down to a few short words. Now, if I was creating this video for how to create clickable thumbnails for YouTube, um, I might want the phrases clickable thumbnails for YouTube or create thumbnails with Canva or something like that. Um, I'm gonna try and, I wanna get the Canva logo in here somehow. So what I'm gonna do is just um, increase some, I'm gonna put in a bunch of text here. I'm gonna get rid of the subheading here. And then I'm gonna put, um, I'm gonna probably put thumbnails and again, that's huge. So have a, round, have a play around with the, the size. This is 126, so that's massive. Uh, that's still quite big, 104, 96. Okay, thumbnails, and then I'm gonna put using Canva. What I'm gonna do for the Canva, I'm just gonna make this left justified, because I'm gonna, uh, you'll see in a minute, I'm gonna put an image on the right-hand side. You want your messaging to be uh, big and bold, so I'm just gonna try and uh, maybe see if bold looks better. Bold, bold's good. Um, and I probably want a little bit of a space here, so I'm gonna make this line a little bit smaller, little trick, and make that like 10, so it sort of spaces them out. And I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna input, import the Canva 
logo here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and go uh, Canva logo. And I could even do transparent background here. Canva logo, transparent background, images, and just going to have a look. That will probably do for me this one here. And then I just have a look, open image in new tab. And then I have a look at this one. Yep, that's pretty much what I want. So I'll uh, save that image as Canva logo, saving that. Come back to, um, I don't need this anymore. So come back to here and this is just, I wanna just click and drag and that'll just import the Canva logo. Neat little trick, if you double click, you can actually crop the logo. So I don't want anything um, above and beyond the actual Canva. And here I would probably reduce this down to size. It's a little bit big um, here. So as you can see, it's a little bit sort of um, a wash with the background. So what I like to do, and this is just me personally, I like to import like a, a, a shape. And with the shape, I like to put it either behind the, the lettering. So it really stands out. So this one, for instance, this could be white. So you could make this shape white and that really pops. And then the word using, you could even have this as uh, white and then you could probably copy this, this shape here and then copy paste and then make this shape black, I would say, um, to contrast with that white. And if you have anything in, in Canva that is the overlays you're having a bit of a problem with, um, what you need to do is just right click it and then arrange and then you can send it backwards and there you go. You can have a play around with here. So for this one, I would just sort of drag it down and I'd probably put this, try and have a play around with where you wanna see this. So I probably wanna put the middle lettering there. Um, and again, just remember here, if that's annoying you, you could probably take that out and make sure that these things are on their own so you're not duplicating. So then just copy this, uh, copy this and paste into here and then just put using something like that and then just remember you want white white here and then that would work for me there and if I just pull that back down to there that really pops now I'm going to make sure that that is in a good position uh, I'd probably say that's pretty decent and then I'll probably just drag that back down uh, into something like that so then you want the um, the text up here to sort of align and I'll probably push that up a little bit so that actually looks pretty good. And then you want the actual um, text as well. You want to be moving the text. Um, it's quite tricky when, when you've got a few things on a page. But this thing here, I want to then click and drag. And I want to move it. If I can actually click out and then click in and move it to sort of there. So thumbnails using and then Canva, you probably want... Um, you want to put a bit of an outline on here and I showed you how to do creating um, background outlines. You edit the image in, in a previous video. Um, you can just put, uh, if you come down here and you just click glow and then you click it again. I probably want that to pop with a little bit of a white background, um, no blur, no transparency. And yeah, that sort of pops if I just do something like that. Apply and then as you can see, that sort of Canva pops out a bit more. So something like this, I'm quite happy with this for as a starter for 10. Thumbnails using Canva. I want to have a little bit more of a pop. So um, what I want to try and do is a fade. If I look at here, that's a fade. So I try and have a little bit of a, uh, a fade from the left-hand side uh, and just put a bit of color in here, but then send this back. Again, arrange, uh, send backwards. Again, I'll send it backwards again, uh, arrange and then send backwards. Again, once more, you can, you can, if I can go all the way to the back, uh, but send to back, there you go. So thumbnails using Canva. Right, now what I wanna try and do is get uh, an Im image of myself in here. So I, I have, before I shot this video, I created uh, a quick, um, quick screen grab. So I just looked in the camera, create a quick screen grab, and with exactly that same process of the video that I've done before in how to actually get rid of a background and then actually put a white outline on myself. I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. But if you want to know how to do this process, you can watch this video. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and pause this video and do that now. Okay, so all I've done is I've removed the background of that image and then I've created a white outline to try and make uh, my image of myself just pop, just pop that a little bit more. Again, if you want to see that, go and watch that video. And then all you need to do is just click and drag it for however big you want this thumbnail. Now, I actually want to position this sort of around um, here in my video. So as you can see, this uh, lettering here is too big. So what you want to try and do is take that down a little bit and I'll probably take it down a little bit further. So maybe 80 would be good. And then again, you just want, want to try and drag all these out of the way um, just so you can actually see that image and it doesn't clash with anything else. I'll probably drag that out of the way as well. So that's pretty much all I would do to actually create a thumbnail um, if you're wanting to stop the scroll and actually get the click because that is ultimately what you need to do with a, a thumbnail is to get the click. Now, a good little tip when you're creating thumbnails is once you've actually uploaded them onto wherever, onto YouTube or any social media platform, actually stand back from your computer. Actually take a walk across to even the other side of the room and have a look just to see if you can read the thumbnail, if it makes sense to you what that thumbnail is all about because it's just the, the window into the piece of media behind that thumbnail. Or better yet, uh, look at it on your mobile device. So if you're creating this for YouTube, have a look at the YouTube Studio app or have a look on YouTube once you produce that piece of content to see if you can actually read that thumbnail. The thumbnails with too much wording or too much on there, they just get, in my opinion, too cluttered and you can't understand them and you're just going to scroll straight past them. Now for me, I would just try and finish off the, the thumbnail just by trying to put a, some sort of board around it. This is, this is just me. I would go to Elements and then I would just click on a rectangle. Going into this, I would probably wouldn't give it any uh, inside. I'll probably make the, the spacing uh, a little bit deeper line and I'll probably try and put that color um, white, uh, make the border weight a little bit more. And then all I do is I just click and drag this to the, the borders of your, um, of your thumbnail and then actually just bring it to the front and then that will just create a nice border so it will um, enhance that thumbnail, make it pop a little bit more. Again, you might want to increase that a little bit more uh, just so it's covering all the edges. Uh, and then yeah, right click and then arrange, bring forward or bring to front. And then yeah, I'd probably tweak around with this until I was happy that um, making sure there's no spelling mistakes and thumbnails using Canva, this is pretty much what my thumbnail could look like. I might have a few more tweaks, but then yeah, how to create thumbnails that convert you for YouTube. This is probably the one that I'm going to use. So hopefully you found value in that short video, how to create clickable thumbnails for YouTube. Now, Canva is one of the tools, one of the paid tools as this, some of these features were a pro feature. So Canva is one of the paid tools that I use to run and grow my online business. Now I do scrutinize all of the tools that I use. If you want to have a look at what tools I use to grow my online business, head on over to timpeatman.com forward slash tools. I have created a free PDF checklist for you to download and scrutinize. There's free tools on there. There's the paid tools that I use, but have a look see which ones that you are aware of, see which ones that actually you probably think, yeah, I could be paying for that or actually I could get a free version of that. So timpeatman.com forward slash tools to get your checklist today. And I look forward to seeing you again on another video soon.